Howdy folks, Grok the Duck Farmer here, and today let's talk about power in modded Minecraft. Whenever I start on a Hermitcraft uh, ModSoft server, one of the first things I do is I'll make me a furnace generator to power the, the various machines I need. It's quick, it's easy, you can burn wood, coal, it, 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 it does the job for the first couple days. In the, in the game. Uh, it's really fast, it's good. Then you get to the point where that's just not enough and so we need something a little bit more powerful and by that time I start going into wind turbines which you can get from the mechanism generators. I've got uh, Ender IO power conduits and I've got myself a couple tesseracts. The reason why I like the tesseracts is it allows me to power the, the same machines, but I don't have to be connected. Uh, over here, sure enough, I've got to be connected directly to my generator to power those, but here I don't have to. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about uh, these turbines, and you can see I've got several stuck around here, they generate more power based on their height. So if we talk about it, uh, in my quick test world here, at 64 blocks height, it was generating 138 RF per tick. This one here is generating 172, uh, that's at a, a higher height, and more up above. And uh, the higher you can put it, the more power it will generate. Uh, so at 128 block height, you're generating about 185% of what you do at uh, 64. 192, you're generating 267%. Uh, and at 252, which is as high as you can build one of these turbines, you're generating almost 350% the power of doing it down at uh, Y64. Just pillar up, put it up there, attach it to a, a, a tesseract, and you will have power for days. And then comes the point where you say, you know, I need even more power, the, t the turbines just aren't doing it for me, so it's time to go ahead and make a, a big reactor. This one is a pretty simple one, it's a 5x5 five five with just a single um, power core in the, the system in the center. I do have the liquid ender here to, to cool it. Uh, I have two access ports. Uh, this one's set to to receive the elorium and this one's set to output the, the waste. And I'm using the ender IO conduits. This one pulls out and that one's putting in. And you can tell that I've got uh, different colors on here and the, the different channels just because, you know, hey, the, the cobalt coming out, that, that's that's a blue and the, the alarm going in, that's yellow, so hey, it makes sense. This one does about 2,000 RF per tick. It's, it's not a, a super big one, but it, it works nicely. And I have the power tap up here at the top. Now, you could uh, attach, you know, all sorts of things here, but I tend to go with capacitor banks. I like the way that they can store a huge amount of energy and they're very modular. I can build all sorts of stuff with them. And because I have, go away, uh, because I have that power tap right there, hiding underneath this one, it is receiving power from the system. Uh, next, let's go ahead and take our Tesseract, drop that right in there. And then we'll want to modify the capacitor bank you can see how both of these are inputting power into the Tesseract. Uh, I like changing one of them to an output. That way the Tesseract can do both insert and out, uh, both uh, send and receive uh, power. At this point, notice how uh, the capacitor bank is going up. That's because the uh, turbine over there is giving me a little trickle of power. It's a nice, uh, a nice amount. But if I just come in here and turn this on and walk away, it's going to continually burn some of the eulorium. Not at a, a huge tick, but it will go ahead and do so. It makes, in my opinion, more sense to go ahead and set this up so that it only fires off when I need it. And to do that, we can use a couple other pieces. Let me grab them real quick. I put up near the top, and it can't be in the, the, the top row or on the corners, I'll go ahead and 
put in here a redstone port from Big Reactors. Not the red net, but the red stone. And if we right click that, I turn it to turn on when it receives a signal, a redstone signal. And when the signal is off, the, the reactor goes off. And then to provide that signal, I use the power monitor from Ender I.O. And if we do a quick uh, configuration on that, I tend to set it so that if the capacitor bank drops below 50%, it fires on, and when it hits 95, it turns itself off. And we need to make sure we enable that. But this has no idea what the capacitor banks are doing unless we connect it, and it has to be connected with an Ender I.O. conduit. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just using the wimpiest of the energy conduits. And you can see the power has turned on. This is running because the capacitor bank is less than 50%. And the nice thing about this is it's very modular. If I've got a lot more resources and I want to have a bigger capacitor bank, it's very easily done. I just added myself another group of banks. Now I'm doing, you know, 245 million RF can be stored in that capacitor bank. And you can keep growing that up to 2 billion. If you need more, just attach it with some conduits and make a, a second bank on top. It's that easy. This has been Grok the Duck Farmer talking a little bit about how to do power in modded Minecraft. Hope you enjoy. Bye.